Hello, and welcome to College Theater Auditions, presented by Playbill and The Growing Studio. I'm Danny George. Every Monday and Wednesday, we chat with different Broadway directors, choreographers, composers, lyricists, you name it. Every Friday, we bring in two musical theater and acting colleges uh, to talk about college theater auditions. If you are not following us on Instagram, please do so, at Playbill uh, and at The Growing Studio. I am so excited to welcome faculty today from Oakland University and the University of Michigan. I have Josh Young and Vincent Cardinal. Are you there? Hi. Hello. It's good to see you, boys. How are you doing? Good. I'm doing well. Thank you. Uh, where are you located right now during quarantine? Vincent? I'm in Ann Arbor. Nice. And I'm in Lake Orion, Michigan. We're, it's about an hour from Ann Arbor. Okay. Not too far. Not at all. Um, so I'm here to talk uh, a little bit about your, your programs. Uh, viewers, if you have questions, go ahead and comment on Facebook or YouTube. Let us know what those questions are, and we'll bring a couple of you uh, onto the broadcast live today to ask yourselves. Um, the first thing I want to talk about is the Black Lives Matter movement uh, and what your programs are doing to be inclusive of uh, BIP, BIPOCs uh, in your programs. Sure. Well... I can speak for myself and my department when I say we believe Black Lives Matter and we'd like diversity to be our greatest strength. Uh, and right now we know we have a long way to go. Um, I think the one thing we're, we're really working on is recruitment. Um, we would like to bring in as many BIPOC students as we can so that our student body reflects the um, population of the United States. Mm -hmm. um, so we're doing a lot of outreach and uh, we're, we're out reaching out to uh, high schools that have large um, populations of BIPOC students. Uh, we're inviting them to some of our um, online programs. Right now we're doing a weekly master class. Um, last week, week we had Steven Schwartz. Uh, next week we have Norm Lewis. We're inviting these students to watch these these uh, master classes with us and then have a talk back with them afterwards and try to get them um, more involved and hopefully get them to be interested in Oakland as a university as as their um, future education. In addition to that, the uh, university is uh, creating a scholarship in George Floyd's name. But really what we're doing most of all is listening to our students. And I think that's the that's the most we can do right now. Thank you. And uh, we concur that black lives do matter that this is an incredible moment in history where finally maybe we move toward the world we wish it were that's just for everyone. Um, we're doing a lot of things right now and, and we have had a very diverse student population for many years and we're, we're proud of that and we're proud of the conversations and the work they do, but it's not good enough to just have diversity. And so we are also taking this time to re-examine our curriculum, to build in training for both students and faculty, to make sure that our production system and the opportunities are really amplifying voices equally mm -hmm. and uh, allowing people to have their say and have their point of view. We're really excited about our new musical theater composition minor because we, as we look at what musicals are out there and what's going on, there isn't enough representation. So being able to host a minor that will allow students of every background to get their voices out there, we hope will change the industry and create the material and, and opportunity to uh, hear from more people in, in deeper, more exciting ways. Thank you. Um, my first question uh, is how uh, many students do you guys take into your programs? We take between 22 and 24 each year, and then that particular class is split for their actual studios. Uh, and it's mixed up. It's not like you stay with the same cohort all the time. So our class size is 11 or 12, but we're looking at 22 to 24. We accept um, between 15 and 20, and we also split up the classes um, um, so that there's between 12 and 16 in a class. Um, but yeah, between 15 and 20 for musical theater. Uh, what about acting? Uh, acting, we um, accept between 10 and 15 students, but we're really, um, it can fluctuate because we try not to be driven by numbers. We've had as few as five 
We've had over 20 in the past. Uh, it depends on the people who are auditioning and, and if we want them to be a part of our student body and represent the school. And uh, it really depends on the people auditioning. Mm -hmm. And acting is similar for, for us. They're a different department than we are. Uh, the way we're organized is there's a musical theater committed department and then there's theater and drama, which has acting, but they're around the same numbers, 20-ish. Uh, this question is the most asked question by our viewers. What do you look for in a prospective student? Well, I look for individuality. Um, I think a big part of their audition is we, after, after we have them sing and do their monologue and dance, we like to sit down with the students and find out who they are and see what kind of fit that they would be. We want to make sure that, um, that they're good people and uh, that they can hold a conversation with us. And, and there's a lot because of nerves uh, that we might not get in their uh, songs or their monologues. So, so we can connect with them on a personal level after that. It's a great thing. So I look for that a lot. And of course, obviously, we look for talent. We look for people who are talented and whose talent comes out of them in a in a unique way. Um, we don't want to create students who are just good. We want to create students who are memorable and uh, are individuals. Thank you. We love all that stuff, too. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would add that uh, we're also looking for people who are intellectually really curious. That Going to the University of Michigan, our, our degree is one third classes outside of their major uh, and finding people who are interested in the world uh, in ways that that will drive them to explore the university uh, beyond their studios. Mm -hmm. um, and then I would say I, I want to amplify the individuality that we really do look for a diverse class. So in addition to, to the diversity in economics, ethnicity, world experience, um, we don't want the class to get together and all agree on the same thing. We want them to have different points of view. And then we tend to take some really great dancers, some really great singers, some really great actors, so that somebody is holding the bar always for you in terms of I'm aspiring to do this better. So that diversity uh, is core to our educational philosophy. Um, and then I would say the other thing, as, as Josh said, we really want human beings. Mm. And I think knowing that when you go into your audition situation is important. That when you forget your lyric or have to start again or trip on the way to center stage or whatever thing goes wrong, that's just part of being human. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't see all of that stuff that you play over and over again in your mind that I should have been better as a negative. I think it's just as part of your humanity. And really how you respond to it, that reveals more to you about you than the mistake itself. Absolutely. Uh that leads to the next question perfectly. It's a great segue. Uh, this is from Juan Pablo Madero from Guadalajara, Mexico. Uh, what would you recommend to applicants who do get nervous at auditions? What can we do to make sure that we do well in our college auditions? Well, I, I think the biggest thing to remember, and this goes for all auditions, it goes for all interviews, is that um, the people behind the table, and this is said a lot, and I'm sure Vincent will agree with me, is that we want you to do well. Um, we desperately want you to do well. We want you to, to make us look good. So we wanna, we wanna um, bring in a great class of people. Um, when, when somebody's casting a show, uh, any casting director will say they want you to do well. And I think going in with the knowledge that the people behind the table want you to do well, we want to have you join our program. Um, we are on your side. I think that might help a little bit with nerves. The other thing is, I think always with nerves, preparation is key. Yes, I do agree, Josh. <laughs> I, uh, doing everything you can to prepare is super important and pick material that you can do on a bad day. Mm. Um, yeah, you may have that high note. Yes, you may be able to mind the depths of that emotion on a great day, but you know, it's not a great day. Your schedule's messed up. You're nervous. Things are not normal for you. Mm. So find where you're most stable. I agree with Josh to relax, breathe before you go in, do all those, those basic things. And I think another reframe for me that always helps is this is not like auditioning for a show. 
this is really, don't knock us dead. There should be no violence. <laughs> Go in thinking in terms of, I'm a young artist who's going to meet with some senior artists and they're going to assess where I am in my educational journey. Mm. And they will identify what's best for me. And this is not about impressing. This is about a real assessment of where you are today mm. and where, where you can grow in the next four years. So think of it more like a meeting and um, not about good or bad, but what's the right fit for you? The, the thing I say ad nauseum is there is a space somewhere for everybody. Mm -hmm. And it's not about the fancy name school. It's not about bragging. It's really how do you find those teachers who match your journey as a learner? Mm -hmm. And when you find those, it doesn't matter where they are, what the school looks like, whether the name is recognized or not. You found your people and you're going to grow and thrive there. So this this journey is not about I've got my top five schools and I have to get into that or I'm going to, going to go in there and show them what I can do. It's, it's a different process. There's a little bit of that knock them dead stuff for auditioning for shows, mm. but not auditioning for college. Mm -hmm. this, this is a meeting, not an audition. I mean, I, I wish I knew that going into schools. I feel like I'd be so much calmer. You right. know, we, I, I feel like at, at 18, you just put so much pressure on yourself, you know, to, to be the best and get in the best school. And, you know, what does that even mean? It's nice to know that the best school is different for each student. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's just about your fit. Mm. This next question is from Anna Lee, all the way from Malaysia. Oh. Uh, I am a student uh, living in Malaysia. What are my chances of being accepted into your program as an international student? Um, yeah, we have international students. I think the biggest obstacle for an international student is just the travel and getting here and you know all of that sort of stuff but we do not sort and say well that person's from another country so they do or don't have a better chance we're really looking for a student from wherever they are i would say this because we're so committed to a diversity of experience and there are fewer international students who apply i am often drawn to international students because i love a class that has people from all over the world in it. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't count myself out because of distance or difference. Um, in fact, I would lean into to that. Right. Um, and I would say this in general, don't count yourself out, period. It's uh, self-selection and selecting yourself out. You don't have the perspective. So if you're interested, if your heart's there, you might as well go for it. Plenty of people in your life will say no to you. You don't need to be one of those. Mm -hmm. So don't self-select out. But yes, international students, um, I'm, we, we love having a really exciting mix of people with all kinds of backgrounds. Yeah, I, I, I feel the same way. Um, uh, we don't care where you are coming in from. As long as you come in, uh, audition for us. Um, we would love to have... Um, uh, international students from wherever. Um, it's one thing we were really trying to um, do some outreach for right now. Uh, right now, a lot of our student body is in state, um, so much so that we we want to bring in more people and we're offering um, in-state tuition for out-of-state people. So you you count as one of those. So if you are interested, apply, audition, send a tape. And uh, now it's actually easier for you because everybody's going to be doing virtual auditions. So definitely um, audition which is a great segue to this next question. This is from a parent. Uh, her name is Terry. Given the curtain, current and uncertain state of the coronavirus, how will this impact juniors and seniors if they are unable to attend auditions and tours in person? That's a big question. Yeah, I, I, it will impact them. I think we got to lay that out there. Mm. Um, and how, I don't know. I, I feel lucky that we're buying a little time because we do pre-screens. So um, we've got a little time here where we're going to be just as we always have been, which is you all do your pre-screens, we look at them, we assess them. It's the next step that stays in the air uh, at the moment. 
We will do the best thing for you. Our goal is that you find your best program for mm -hmm. you. So all of our decision making is related to that. And there are so many things on the table from doing a live audition like we're doing today with this broadcast, but you know, internally, uh, doing a live audition that way. And then maybe later in the spring when things are safer, doing a call back to campus. Mm -hmm. Maybe if things are safer earlier, we dump all of our auditions in a week time and bring people in live. Um, there, we're going to do what serves you. And at the end of that, please know that everybody's in the same boat. It's not like this is going to mess up your opportunity. Mm -hmm. We know what you're dealing with. You know what we're dealing with and we're going to do right by you. So I'd focus really on what you have control of today. What you can control today is what audition material you're going to choose, how prepared you are all of the things that set you up to um, be successful in the first round of things anyway. Mm. So, so you know, I, I'm not the wisdom that says this, but focus on what you can control. Right. And everything else will be clearer later. Yeah. I think it's always important to focus on what you can control because uh, there's so much you can't. Um, I just want to make sure I understood the question. Are they talking about high school Juniors and seniors going into college or college yeah. juniors and seniors. Okay. Um, yeah, I agree with everything Vincent said. Um, everything's really up in the air. Um, I, I say focus on on your um, package that you're putting together. One thing that's good to know is if you, if you for us, I'm, I'm not sure how it is at other universities. Um, uh, if you're concerned about uh, your ACTs or SETs, we are, we, you, those are not, um, you do not have to submit those right now uh, to be considered for our program. Um, that is because of what's going on right now. So that's one thing that you can breathe easy about. Um, obviously, we want great students, but but as long as you have a GPA of above uh, 3.0, you will be considered. Um, other than that, focus on your audition um, and 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 sending in a great tape. And the good the good thing I'll say is every university I have talked to around the country, which are many. Uh, at this point, we're all sort of in the same boat in terms of saying, you know, if the ACT, SAT thing is impossible for you, we get it. We're not going to create extra obstacles now that are just impossible. So do your best, respond to what's going on, and, and you're going to be fine. Can we talk a little bit about that preparedness, you know, what we can control as prospective students? Uh, are, is there material uh, that you have an aversion to? Is there material that we should be looking at? Uh, should we be looking at classic material, new composer? What makes sense to show off our best skill sets? I, I know we asked for two contrasting songs and a monologue. Uh, I know people are hung up on what specific songs uh, are blacklisted. Um, I don't think there are any. Uh, as long as you bring yourself to the piece, uh, that's what I want to see. Um, there are songs, for instance, almost any song that Barbara Streisand sang um, that are kind of you, sitting behind a desk. We might have like We'll be comparing you because it's so iconic. If right. you see people, you know what I mean? It's hard to get Barbara out of your head. Right. Um, Celine Dion, okay? Um, but if you can bring yourself completely to that, maybe you'll make me forget Barbara or Celine. <laughs> Who knows? Right. Yeah, I, I, I agree with Josh on that in terms of material. I, It's really what you do well and what you feel represents where you are right now in your training. I would avoid in terms of monologues, things that are super sexual or even songs that are super sexual. Agreed. Just because it, it becomes awkward. It's not that that's naughty material and you shouldn't investigate and all that. It's not about morality. It's just like we're, we're adults in a room with a very young person and that just gets kind of weird and icky. Mm -hmm. So don't put, don't put another obstacle like that in the room. Mm -hmm. But that's the only thing I say you know, don't do that. I would say one more. Um, remember that there is not an equation between loud and good. <laughs> and so if when you pick music, pick things that allow you to communicate something rather than something that's just belt city for a full three minutes or whatever your time limit is. So that that's another one. Just 
communicate, be a communicator. I agree completely. Also, I wanted to say, I, I thought of one other thing. Um, when you pick your monologue, I it might be just a pet peeve of mine when people come in and they say, uh, I say, what what monologue are you doing? They say the name of the monologue. Where's it from? And they say a monologue book. I want I want you to have read the, the play and tell me what play it's from. That's right. That makes sense. Um, you talked a little bit about contrasting pieces, Josh. I, I remember when I was auditioning for school about 10,000 years ago, uh, you know, coming in, I, uh, I got so hung up on, on the word contrasting because I, I felt like I had to come in and sing this like, you know, really legit song, even though I had never sung legit ever before. So instead of singing two contrasting pop rock songs, I came in going, ah, they want something very uh, legit and something very contemporary. Is that the case? Um, I, I, for me, I just wanna see uh, how flexible you are. Um, mm -hmm. how, how much you can stretch between different genres, whatever that is, because uh, the industry right now Listen, if you can sing, uh, if, if you can sing Billy Bigelow and also rap, that's what I want to see. Uh, I want to see you stretch yourself um, and I want to see you do those things well. If you don't do those things well, do what you do well. Um, highlight what you do well in the audition. And I wouldn't focus so much on on genre as um, as I would. Whatever it means to you, contrasting. I just want to see what you do well. We had a guy, we had a guy come in. Um, I don't think he had a... a ton of background in musical theater. He sang uh, one song that wasn't in English and the other one that was like Perry Como or something like that. And it, and, and it blew me away and, and we let him into the school. Um, it was memorable, interesting, and he told the story and he sang the crap out of it. Um, so whatever it means to you, whatever you do best, that's what I wanna see. And yeah. we, we do a, like a pre, I think it's 1954, something from pre-1954 and then post-1954. And again, it's it's exactly what Josh is saying. We're trying to see the range of your voice, what styles you do. And remember, we're looking for what you do well, not what you do poorly. Mm. So it's not about, oh, wow, they don't sing Golden Age well. It's really, here's a range of things so we can discover your superpower. Mm. Uh, it's not a. It's really not an assessment on your negatives. It's really an assessment of where your strengths lie and how we can help you realize them. Thank you. Yep. This question uh, is from social media. This is from Kiki Wilson from El Paso, Texas. What do you learn, uh, look for in terms of a dancer for dance auditions? Um, I, I'm i new to Oakland University. It's my first year here. I haven't sat in on a lot of the dance uh, auditions. So I, I mostly- I, I'm, I, think, I think they mean for the musical theater program. For the the audition for the musical theater program. Yeah, get in. Yeah. So uh, I think that's what I was answering. I I don't. I I we have got some amazing dance professors here. I sit in on the acting and the singing portions, and I'm not a dance expert, so I leave that to them and for them to tell me great dancer or not because I don't know, <laughs> and I know what I don't know, and that's what I don't know. So I I take recommendations from our fantastic dance professors, mm -hmm. um, Vincent. I'm sure you can answer that better than I just did. <laughs> well, it will surprise you to know I'm not a dancer either. Uh, but what our dance audition looks like is we do bar for half of it mm -hmm. and then a musical theater uh, combination. We're looking for people who at all ranges. So it does not make or break you. Maybe if you come into the department because you're an amazing dancer and that's your really good thing, uh, that in another area that you you need to grow further, mm. or you're a mover and a good communicator as a physical person, but these are this is not your skill, but you sing your face off. So we're looking for that mix. You do need to be able to do the basics, uh, be game to follow along. And uh, the in conversation with people who have gotten into the program all the time, some will say, oh, I thought I just killed in my dance and it was wonderful and that's why I got in right versus I thought I destroyed my chances because my dancing was so terrible and all that. So your self-perception as a dancer, you can kind of throw it out the window and just come in and do, do you, do your best thing and communicate as a, a, a performer. 
But you'll be okay. You'll you'll go through ballet. You'll go through combination, and it's fun. Uh, this question is from Millie uh, Castellón. Uh, is it age a make uh, or break factor when it comes to auditioning for your musical theater programs? No, I, I don't think it's. I don't think it's a consideration. Um, it's all, you know, like we've said again and again, what that person brings to the table. Uh, I, I, we would we would look at people of all ages as long as you're over eight. Oh, sorry, not over eighteen. As long as you've you've got you've got you graduated from high school, um, and you got those transcripts. Yeah, that's not a that's not a conversation we've ever had about this sh person should or should not get in because of age. Right. I when I was in school, I remember I had a transfer student who was in their thirties, and their life experience was uh, far different from mine at eighteen. Sure. And, yeah, it it was amazing. And it would, it would, you know, having people of all ages will help with casting our shows. Yeah. <sighs> Ain't it the truth? Choosing our shows. Yes. I have a couple of guest artists I want to bring on to the broadcast, if that's okay. Sure. Yeah. Just give me one sec. Our engineers are bringing them on. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello. Don't blow. Hello. 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 How are you all? Andrew, how's it going? It's good. I I am up in the mountains of Colorado, so if my Wi-Fi is terrible, apologies to everyone. Oh, so, Leia, how are you? I am so good. I'm so happy to be here. I'm, I'm in sunny Los Angeles, so I can't can't complain too much right now. It looks beautiful. <laughs> Ashley, how's it going? Good. Hi, Vince and Hello. Josh. Hi, hi. Hi. Um, so I wanted to bring you guys on to talk a little bit about your experience uh, at Michigan. Um, I'm going to start with Ashley. Uh, why should we choose uh, to go to Michigan? Oh, gosh. Well, um, I'm partial because I'm from Ann Arbor, Michigan. Um, and for me, I got into really got into musical theater because of the musical theater majors at that school. Um, they were my directors growing up and in high school. Andrews worked with YPT. Yeah. Um, and and for me, um, I really wanted like a college experience that had both the conservatory and the university feel. And I just think that um, Michigan does such a great job of, you know, really giving you the, the space to really focus on the craft. But also you get to go to like football games and Greek life if, if you want. And there's just so many opportunities. And I think that the school for me, like I really love that our school um, really stressed as being like a kind and a smart person um, mm -hmm. and a grateful person. I think I'm sure um, Andrew and Saleh feel the same way. And I just, uh, I felt the most at home, not only because I was in my hometown, but <laughs> at that school. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Saleh, you've had an, an amazing career already so far. And I know you're, you're out you. recently. Um, how did Michigan prepare you uh, for your career now? Um, I think my experience at Michigan, one, I think, unique thing about the program is that it's a very self-driven program and you get out of it what you put in. Um, and I think that I kind of had the freedom um, at the Michigan program to become the kind of artist that I wanted to be. I, I, I was able to travel abroad. I was able to kind of focus on skills that to me were maybe more important than this, that, or the other thing. Like, I was able to really kind of begin to pave my own road at Michigan to be like, okay, the, this is the kind of career that I want to emulate. This is the kind of like path I want to carve out for myself. And I felt like I had total freedom to kind of discover who that artist was at Michigan and like kind of come to into the city being like, all right, I have a pretty clear sense of who I am, what I want to do and how to prepare a really solid audition. <laughs> so that I think that's in the most, there's so much I can say, but in the most concise way, I think that's what I would have to say. Yeah, it, it makes me want to go back and, and go to Michigan. Oh my God. Oh my gosh. Yeah, <laughs> more than anything. Gosh, that would be the best. <laughs> uh, Andrew, you guys have such a unbelievable sense of pride. It's almost like you guys are a mafia. You know, you, you can't go anywhere in New York City without hearing Go Blue everywhere or seeing it everywhere. Uh, what is it about Michigan that, that creates such a huge sense of pride? Yeah, I, I think it comes down from the top. Uh, right from the beginning, the department heads and uh, all the teachers, they, it is not a competitive environment that I feel like is often depicted uh, 
like in movies and films of like the cutthroat conservatory. Um, it is really, it's collaborative, it's supportive. Um, you do your best work when you're working with other people. And I think that was instilled in us right at the beginning. Uh, you're not really also allowed to get like a big head while you're at school. And I think when you graduate, um, there's, uh, such a huge sense of collaboration, uh, even while you're at school, so that uh, when people are working on projects, Michigan always jumps out on a resume. Um, there, I've been in so many rooms where people are like, "You went to Michigan, me too, go blue!" Um, it's it's an incredible pride, and I think that comes from the teachers and also just from being at a great school. Also, sidebar: I totally saw Ashley Park as Maisie LeBird when she was in like seventh grade. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I mean, I go away oh, my oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm like, that girl is going to win too. I did not want to go to the school when people like Andrew were at it. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's what you want. <laughs> it's the kind of people we want to be. But I, I will also say, you know, we're like, we're like the Michigan mafia is known to be so polished and great, like in like work rooms, but it's because we are given a space in school to like really fail. Mm -hmm. I think all of us like got to be like the worst versions of ourselves and like the learning versions of ourselves in this yes. school so that we were really able to up, you know, level up when we got into the real world. And Vince, I'm so happy you're like the head of the department now. Mm -hmm. I've heard wonderful things about you. Well, as am I. And it's always amazing to see you folks out there thriving. I, I, I mean, I, for one, I'm so uh, envious of your sense of community. You know, it's no matter where you go, it feels like you guys are family, even if you've never met each other, just from going to the same university. And I think it's so beautiful and wonderful that you have that camaraderie. Um, I have another question for you guys about campus life. Uh, I think, you know, we, we uh, are applying to a lot of conservatories. And I know for me, um, I, I have a little bit of regret not going and experiencing uh, a real college. Uh, could you talk a, a little bit about campus life at Michigan? Yeah, I mean, I, I remember just feeling really lucky. Um, you know, M Michigan has what, like 40,000 students, like some insane, you know, past like 10,000. It's just like, it's just a ton of people. And I remember feeling so lucky um, coming into my college experience with a built in group of like best friends. Like I had the people in my class and then everyone else in, in the department. And so you were, you, you, you know, I, I like personally didn't necessarily want to be involved in Greek life. And I like didn't feel that pressure at all, which I thought was kind of, which was a cool and unique thing about um, being at Michigan within that, within our program was that our campus life was so community based and it was so like, and I, I, felt, I feel like I was surrounded by artists like most of the time, which was really, really cool. But if you ever, if that ever wasn't your thing, you could go explore like literally 40,000 other people and different, right. different, there was so many different avenues to go down. And so like, you could really kind of pick and choose and figure out who you were and who you wanted to surround yourself with it's so many different clubs to do. Like there were just so many options all the time. I feel like like thinking of it like in now and like off of what you're saying, it's it's funny like as I'm thinking about it that it kind of is a replica of what New York City is like or what the industry is like in which you go in and we have this community of people like New York City is not just Broadway. There's like the Fide Eye District. There's like lots of stuff going on. So it's kind of like you have your built in what exactly what Soleil said that like you're built in like own sorority or fraternity or like network of people and like artists and people that you feel comfortable with who share what you have on the inside, but I think everybody who graduates in the department has some sort of friend or connect or many of them who are in just all these different areas of life. And like what we find as artists as we grow up is like it's not the it's not being an artist is about being like a really well-rounded person too. And so just to have the different perspectives of people and this huge university of people from everywhere, all different interests, like really built us as people, I think. I also think too, it, it's not only an incredible department, but um the University of Michigan is one of the best public universities in the country. So you are encouraged to, and you're required to take a lot of classes outside of the department. And I think it's why a lot of the Michigan kids have gone on to uh, be real kind of hyphenates within the theater community. You have, like in my class, it was me and uh, Benj Pasek and Justin Paul. Um, and I, I got to take a lot of, almost every one of my electives was creative writing. And I feel like I would have never had the confidence. I'm now like an author. There's a bunch of other authors too who've graduated from the department, um, music video directors, filmmakers. Um, and I think a lot of that comes with having access to a curriculum 
of just like really top tier education. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Guys, uh, listen, the, the fact that you are all such massive celebrities and stars in your own right and you are here taking the time to promote your program is, it really says something. But well, so it's genuine too, like, I'm sorry, just to like say, like, like me and Talia and Andrew did not go to school together and as soon as we all came out, like just seeing their faces, like it, it really is not just like, oh, go blue, like it's not all talk, like it is genuine, like family and genuine love, truly. Well, it is, it is such an absolute pleasure to have you here. Thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate it. Thank y'all. Yeah. Go Blue! Yeah, go Blue! Thank you, guys. Well, I want to go to University of Michigan now. I know, me too. <laughs> uh, I have another viewer I'd like to bring on, if that's okay. Hello. <laughs> How are you, Elena? I'm good. How are you? Good. I'm so happy to have you. Now, I know you're a graduate of Oakland. Can you tell us a little bit uh, about why you chose Oakland University? Of course. Yeah. Um, I think there's probably something to be said about when you know, you know. I did a lot of auditions as a, as a college senior. Mm -hmm. And I know that when I got to Oakland, it was even something about the audition process and the air itself that I was like, yeah, this is like, I think this is where I'm supposed to be. Um, Everything about the place felt right. I loved all the people. I felt like even during my audition, like Josh was saying earlier, you know, it wasn't just 16 bars, get out of here. Okay. It was, you know, I sang and then they worked on my song with me and I did my monologue and I danced and then we sat down and talked for a really long time. And it, mm -hmm. I think sometimes in this profession, you know, even we call a lot of auditions cattle calls. And, yeah. <laughs> you know, you really don't feel like that when you audition for Oakland. You feel like they actually care about you as an individual. And I knew that I knew right away that that was where I wanted to go. How nice to, to be treated like a human. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's it's so easy. You know, you're you're glad you get it in this industry to, to get lost so easily, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in, in just being treated like another number. So to have that uh, in an educational setting is is so important. Um, can you talk? Yeah, I agree. Can you talk a little bit uh, about how Oakland prepared you uh, for today? Yeah, of course. Um, I think I think the thing that really makes Oakland stand out, especially to me, is I was always like a very academic student, mm. and I was really worried when I came to theater. I was like, "Am I going to lose all of that? Like, am I just going to be like, am I going to be stupid? <laughs> like, I'm not going to be able to go to classes." And Oakland. Oakland never stopped me from doing and exploring anything I wanted to explore. So on top of, you know, singing, acting and dancing, I also expressed an interest in screenwriting and being on stage and being behind the camera. And I got the opportunity to do all of those things. I ended up being the camera tech for a bunch of classes. And, you know, I got to. Um, How cool is that? In, I know it was awesome. Yeah. It was something that I was like, I guess this is a hobby that I won't like get to keep doing. I'll be too busy. Yeah. But you really get to carve your own path. I got to study classical theater in Greece. I got to do a Spanish minor. I was in the honors college. There's really nothing like stopping you from exploring whatever you want. And your your teachers at Oakland always help you along the way. They're interested in learning with you, you know, not just yeah. teaching you what they know. They want to learn too. So it was uh, really great. Now I want to go to Oakland. Uh, can, <laughs> can you tell me a little bit about, at Michigan <laughs> Can you tell me a little bit about campus life? Yeah. So I lived on campus my first year and then I moved to an apartment off campus, but I never felt like I was missing out on the campus life. Right. Um Oakland's campus is small enough that you can walk everywhere which is really nice, um, not so much in the winter, but, <laughs> but that just comes with being really- Builds Michigan. character, yeah. Yeah, it builds character coming to class with your shoes wet. Yeah. <laughs> um, but there's a lot of sports, there's a lot of Greek life, all that sort of a thing. I did, I'm not into sports, I don't know if you can tell that from how I look. <laughs> um, and I never really explored Greek life, but I have friends in the theater program who were all about Greek life. I have friends who would go to every sporting event. Um, if this matters to you, all the sporting events at Oakland are free to students. Okay. So if you want to go to any sporting event, you can go for free. Um, 
but yeah, I mean, I think it's a really safe campus. I never, even walking home, like walking from Varner, which is our, our main theater building to my, um, my first year dorm, which was all the way across campus, like a 12, 13 minute walk. I never felt unsafe. I always felt like Oakland was there for me. They had my back and that I could really do whatever I wanted while I was there. Well, Elena, I want to thank you so much for coming on and, and talking about Oakland. It was such a pleasure. Of course, yeah. Thanks, Elena, <laughs> for joining us. Uh, my next question, it's its so nice to hear from alums, isn't it? Just yeah, to, Thanks for doing that. Yeah, of course. You know, it, its I think it's so important for prospective students to uh, get a feel of the school and from, from their alums, too, and to learn about the programs, you know. Um, it, it's it, it definitely helped me when I was making a decision. Uh, this question is from YouTube. Uh, it is a specific question about material. It's from, ooh, I'm sorry, I'm going to butcher this, uh, Yuri Manzanif. Uh, and the question is about singing uh, songs, audition material that is not, that is not uh, gender specific. Uh, so a male singing a female song or a female singing a male song. Uh, what are your thoughts uh, for auditions? I, I personally, I don't care. Um, as long as you make it interesting, you make it your own, you make choices. Um, I'm, I just want to see again what makes you you. And that goes across not just auditioning for the program. Um, I think I can speak for our entire faculty when I say we are most interested in telling stories unconventionally. If If we're doing Oklahoma and you are somebody who was born a woman now identifies as a man and you're Hispanic. We want, and you want to play curly. We want to see that. Um, that's interesting to us. Um, and the same goes for what the material you, you bring in, bring in what you think is going to be interesting to us, what is going to be compelling and dramatic. Um, and that's what we want to see. And I agree. I agree. I I don't think that we're really looking at music as gendered necessarily, and the characters that are gendered, um, if that expresses something that you want to communicate, that is something that connects to you, so that in your audition you feel like, hey, here's something about me I'm expressing that's important. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think the gender of that fictional character is going to matter to the auditors. It may matter to you, and that's great, you know. But but I would choose it for how it expresses something about you, how it expresses something you want to communicate. Thank you. Uh, this question is from Shelby Smith from Cleveland. Do your prog programs offer financial aid? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Great. We absolutely do. Uh, the program offers um, merit-based financial aid. Um, there's no cap on that per student, and there's uh, there's definitely finance. There's definitely um, academic um, scholarships available as well. Uh, this question is from Perry Rutkovitz. Do your programs have graduate programs? We, we do not. We also do not yet. <laughs> Uh, this question is from Lisa Forger from Seattle. Uh, how many applications do you receive? What are my odds? Vincent. Um, you know, I think looking at the odds is just discouraging. <laughs> and, and so, you know, I really just think you have to think of it in terms of we are going to accept 22 to 24 students. It might as well be you. Mm. Um, I, I don't think the numbers game is helpful. We get a lot, a lot of auditions. We look at those every single pre-screen. Um, we really consider everybody equally. So I think you should think of it as about us in, consulta in consultation with you, mm. not about whether I'm rolling the dice. If it's the best place for you, then I think that's where you'll end up. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's a lot. The numbers are terrible. Um, I think we take we take less than two percent of the applicants. Wow. Yeah, we have uh, between a hundred and two hundred applicants, and we uh, we accept about twenty five percent. Wow, it's hard. It's so hard. Um, this question is from Debbie Neri. Uh, do you offer study abroad programs? If so, where? Yeah, that's one of the most exciting things. Um, there, a lot of our students study abroad one of the semesters of their junior year. And um, we have had students um, all over the world, Paris, the the, uh, the cruise that you take, what semester at sea, 
Uh, a preponderance of our students do go to um, London to study theater. Yeah. Um, but really, we've had them in Africa and in India and in, uh, France. I'm trying to think where else recently. But you can you can define that, and I do think it's important to get out of the house. Mm -hmm. And usually, in the junior year, is a great time because the person you were coming in as a freshman has changed, mm -hmm. and the person who will be entering the field as a professional is sort of starting to emerge. Mm -hmm. So to have a time when you can be yourself without those pre-definitions and sort of see the world as a great thing. So we encourage it. Our, our Office of International Studies is great mm -hmm. about finding connections, whether it's French immersion or, or whatever it is. Yeah, I say if you can, if you have the opportunity to get out there, uh, traveling makes you become a, a more well-rounded person and you can bring that to your work. We, uh, we offer a study abroad program uh, on the Greek island of Hydra, um, where students travel to Athens. They get to uh, perform in Greek amphitheaters. Uh, students can also design their own study abroad, um, and, and that can be anywhere in the world. So I definitely encourage it. Um, uh, we have many scholarships to help with, with that travel abroad. And um, yeah, I, I, say, I say get out there. That's so cool. I mean, so many places I'd like to see and study. I wish we could all go back. <laughs> uh, this question is from Jimmy Coop uh, from Washington, DC. Where do you find most of your talents? We, um, we find most of our talents by our application. Uh, I say about, I think about 90% of our talent right now uh, are people from in-state. So they're people who know about our program and who come to us. Uh, we're, but we are starting to do more outreach. We will be um, part of next year's um, Moonified auditions, which is uh, um, in Cincinnati. Uh, so if you're if you're interested in auditioning for a bunch of schools at one time, we'll be there. Um, I'm not sure the. Uh, I, I think you just look up uh, Cincinnati um, Moonified auditions if you're interested in that. Right. Uh, most most of our talent comes through just auditioning for our program. And and we're the same. Our, our students, however, come from all over the world and uh, preponderance from the United States, but really spread out around the United States. Um, and we do our pre-screen process, then on campus, so at least traditionally, um, and that's where they come from. I would say this while we're on this topic of people coming from, if you're in a situation where you can't afford to come to a campus or to apply or whatever, don't be shy about contacting an admissions office and saying, hey, I need I needed a scholarship to do this. Right. Um, you shouldn't be excluded from access because you're tight financially. So don't be shy to ask the question. The worst thing they do is they say, we don't have any money left to, to support that. Um, but ask the questions. Don't count yourself out because you feel like you're short on resources. Yeah, I agree a hundred percent. If 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 you need help financially, uh, we we offer something called well, our mascot's the Golden Grizzly. Uh, we offer the Golden Grizzly Guarantee, which uh, we feel we have the responsibility to create um, pathways for uh, students who can't afford it. So if your family makes um, an average of around forty thousand dollars, and we actually will consider people up to uh, households that earn up to one hundred and forty thousand dollars, and um, and you can't uh, make ends meet to pay for that to pay for your college education, we will guarantee you free tuition um, as long as your grade point average is above a certain amount. Mm, that's amazing. Um, for all of our viewers as well, you know, we hear a lot about Moonifieds or uh, the CAP project or, or different things going on. You know, a, a lot of them are paid services and I know a lot of people can't afford. So we at Playbill and Growing Studio are working on other initiatives uh, to try to provide free resources, especially for BIPOC students. So uh, please keep your eyes peeled on our sites as you will see things develop there. Uh, Josh, uh, my last question, why should we apply uh, to Oakland? Oh, okay. Well, if you 
are looking for a, a community of wonderful people and a great place to live for four years, um, I think that's something we provide. Uh, it's a really great town. Uh, the campus just, we have a brand new student union, which is amazing. Um, there's tons of fun opportunities all around town. Um, also, um, we have on our campus, we have the largest professional theater in Michigan. Um, and that's a cool thing uh, to have right on your campus. Yeah. Uh, uh, so it's so if, if you're if you're looking to it's a Meadowbrook Theater if you're looking to get your EMC points um, they're right next door. Um, additionally, um, I, I'm new there and and I'm trying to bring and I, I'm recently out of uh, out of the New York acting scene and I, I bring all my connections to Oakland University. Yeah, I mean, um, you're being very humble, but yes. <laughs> well, I, so that's that's I, I I bring everybody I I've worked with. Actually, we just had a master class with uh, a graduate, uh, Rachel Hoffman from um, from University of Michigan. Uh, they've got tons of great graduates uh, who I've worked with all throughout my career. Um, but people like Rachel Hoffman, um, we we had Andrew Lippa the other day. Anybody who I've worked with, I try to bring to do master classes with us. And yeah. every week, every week we have another master class, uh, and that's happening right now during the summer. But we are uh, extending these virtual master classes into um, into uh, the winter semester, at uh, the fall semester. Uh, we have uh, in two weeks. We have uh, Leah Salonga is is joining us from Manila, and that's something you we could have never done. I don't want to say thanks COVID-19. We would have never been able to do that if we weren't all stuck at home. Right. Um, so so that's those, those are some of the things um, that we, we bring to the table right now. Thank you. Yeah. Ben, uh, why should we attend or apply uh, to UMesh? Well, I think it's the same for all universities. I think you look for your fit. Mm -hmm. So we have a student population who's incredibly active. They create all the time. There's a lot of student produced work in every venue, uh, large and small. And it's a community of learners who are as excited about musical theater as you are. Mm. And so finding a dynamic where it's cool to go to class, where it's exciting to make new work, where they're coming together as a unit to move into the profession together, look for places that have students like that. Mm -hmm. And then I think, uh, as Josh mentioned, look at the faculty. Are they working professionally? If you should look for a combo platter of people who are pedagogues, people who are really professional teachers, who can break down music theory for you, who can help you learn specifically. But then also people who are fresh in the professions and still working so that they know what's coming. We're preparing students for a profession that doesn't exist yet. And so you want people on the front line so they can look and say, hey, I think this is what's coming. I think we need to add this to our curriculum. How do we keep it fresh? So look for faculty who are keeping the curriculum current while honoring the past. And then I think the third thing is look at the outcomes. Mm -hmm. Are the students working? Mm. Are they having the careers and the lives that are exciting? You, you may say, you know, you look at a uh, Pasek and Paul, the folks who wrote Dear Evan Hansen, oh, they're the best. Their, their foundation provide them a pathway into the industry at the level they're going to excel. Right. Or the wonderful people you just had on the panel, and thanks to Saleh, Ashley, and Andrew. But are those outcomes that you hope to have in your life after you study? Mm. So, so look at that and, and the celebration of whatever your path is, is yours. So when Andrew says, you know, we have people who are video directors, we go to a place that will celebrate your path, mm. that will help you be excited about the journey you're on and support it. But mostly find your place, find your people. It's about you thriving in your education, not the name that you put at the bottom of your resume. What, what a beautiful reply. Thank you so much, Josh, Vince. It is such a pleasure to talk to you today. Yeah. Uh, two incredible universities. I'm now considering going back to school. I'm not sure which to choose. I mean, we're it, very close to each other, Danny. You can do both. I'll go back and forth. Okay, thank you, you so much for being here. I know you have social media handles for your uh, programs. I just want to put them on the bottom so people can see so they can follow. Uh, it's UMish Musical Theater, and we'll put up Oakland's OUS MTD. Gentlemen, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Thanks for having us. You bet. Stay safe. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you for joining us for College Theater Auditions. On Monday, we are back with the Broadway Q&A as we chat with Walter Bobby, and Wednesday as we talk with Jerry Mitchell. This is Danny George from the Growing Studio and Playbill, signing off. Thanks. <laughs>